Welcome to the new River City Gamers Podcast, hosted by SCXCR and Well Unreal 007, as well as many other members from the River City Gamers website. Stay tuned for all the gaming news, new pickups, and everything else we feel like talking about on the River City Gamers Podcast. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the River City Gamers Podcast. I am a weirdly sounding Unreal this week. Uh, Noah Stoy Zero Master. Um, don't have any freaking languages. I'm only. And, um, I got stuff in front of me. I can't really know how to describe. I'm, uh, Angel Halo, and, uh, today I just had fish. I'm lesbian. guessing the shit in front of you is shit you couldn't read or something. Angel Halo, you are a lesbian. Ew. Okay, <laughs> ew. Get out. <laughs> what? He ate fish. Yeah, uh, I uh, eat fish too. <laughs> now, fish aside, you may notice SDXCR is not here this week. Um, he has a very good excuse. Believe me, he didn't do what Blondie did he, and you know, he's abandoned too busy the He's being entire- the best in the world! Not really. He's actually Phoenix Wright at a wrestling thing at ANG Ohio, and because of that, he couldn't make it this week. He'll be back next week, and I'll probably be dead for being the worst host, but we'll see what happens. And he won. But... Okay, spoilers, thanks! <laughs> <laughs> spoilers, he won. Yeah, whatever. Um, but, yeah, that's why he's not here this week, so... For once, I'm taking the reins and just watch me do a really terrible job at it. And because of that, Unreal, let's go to gaming news. The gaming news is unreal. Thanks, Unreal. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, okay, this, this is already bad. Dude, what if you not die? Beats me. I don't even know how that stuff works. Um. Uh, right. This week for gaming news, um, I have a couple of things. Um, one of them being pretty notable and kind of depressing, especially if you're familiar with uh, gaming in the 90s, like I am and probably a bu- everyone here. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Disney closed LucasArts. Boom! Uh, uh, I, I, I kind of saw LucasArts being closed coming, but... That really sucks, especially if you like adventure games. Um, I, did they say why Disney basically laid LucasArts all off? Cause uh, I don't know. It's from what I understand, the name's still going to be used for publishing, but um, I think it probably had something to do with sales. Their games weren't doing well. Yeah, that's understandable, because a lot of the games they actually did recently... Uh, let's face it, they're kind of fucking blue. Um, I mean, but, Star Wars Connect, Which was also a multi-developer and thing. And the... what was it? The, 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 um, the train wreck that was the Old Republic. <sighs> that was actually not LucasArts. It's still published by them, though. Yeah, but if you want to blame the train wreck, um, that was Bioware and EA, actually. Well, first of all, yeah, you got Bioware. I, I know you're it, associating, uh... EA was there, so... <laughs> I know you're associating LucasArts with everything Star Wars, which, of course, makes sense, but... Didn't they have, like, really a shooter think... planned coming? Like, a really good... That was in development. Uh, Star Wars 1313, or 1313. That was in development, and now it's dead because LucasArts is dead. You know, yeah, they had something else. Uh, I'm sorry, they had something else developed. Uh, Star Wars: First Assault, right? I believe I- so. That was that was like an they leaked uh, screenshots, and it was supposed to sort of be like Battlefront, but I'm not sure. I'm just trying to think. Like, first of all, the thing that sucks the most about this is no Battlefront. Front three. Uh, I love the Battlefront series that they made. Agreed. Like it's, I, I don't like shoot that many shooters, but Battlefront was awesome. And I actually have the first one for Steam, but I never play it because I don't know anybody who has it. 
Well, too bad. I have Battlefront 2 on Steam. Yeah, I need to get that. But... You, they didn't... Let's... I'm trying to think of things non-Star Wars they recently did. I, I can't remember how recent um, the release of Monkey Island was. That may have been it. Actually. When did they re-release Monkey Island? Good question. When did it was uh, a couple years it, ago, I think. It wasn't... I believe it had to be around 2010. I think the sequel to that was out by that time. Yeah. They did some re-releases of their old games. I have Steam opened up, but I can probably look into it right now. Um, I, I guess one notable thing I should mention, it is Star Wars related, um, the Force Unleashed games kind of got them quite a bit. Like, they're not they're not terribly good, but they're okay games. I play them. Oh uh, yeah, the second game was released on July 7th, 2010. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, my birthday! Happy birthday, not yet. Happy birthday. Okay, and uh, we're going to get you Star Wars Club Penguin, but it got canceled because Lucas and, Arts died. Damn it. And, and, the fir- and the first game was released on July 15th of 2009. So, since Scott isn't here, should we all have a moment of silence for Lucas Arts? Um, uh, okay, moment's over. <laughs> well, I, I, was, I was probably going to only offer a moment of silence for... Really, they're older stuff. I don't want to sound hipster, but... Oh, God. Um, uh, a lot of their recent they, games they, just haven't they, been notable. I mean, the 90s was really when they got their boom. I mean, uh, uh, Super Star Wars, um, the all the adventure games they made. Uh, it, they made a bunch of good Star Wars games back then, including crap ones, too. But they made, they made what do you count? stood out. They made what a you- ton of games. I was gonna say, what do you count Shadows of the Empire? Good! Uh, then there's I also Pod that? Racer. Oh god. Which is I... mixed among fans, but I like it. Rebel Assault for me. <sighs> the Jedi Knight games. I would like to say the line, you fight like a dairy farmer. I like the Obi Wan game. Rogue Squadron series. Yep. Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, yeah. Battlefront, of course. Battlefront, yes. I'll kill somebody. Who for likes Battle- that Star Wars fighting game? Oh god. I never <laughs> kinda the, want that. I played the demo to that long, long ago when I'm sorry. Uh, a neighbor brought over a PlayStation. And that neighbor soon moved away. Far, far away. That to a galaxy far, that, far away? That almost kinda happened. And it was because of that game, right? Well, realistically, now. Yeah, of course. Although that would have been great. But but anyways, Lucas Arts is done. It kind of sucks. Let's just hope whoever gets Star Wars for games from now on, which will probably be Disney Interactive. Because Disney already has the movie license, so this is already not looking good for Star Wars. Well, let me put it this way. If it was Disney Interactive in the 90s... Yes. Disney Interactive now, not a chance. <laughs> well, they did go- they did do one good thing. What? They did cancel the Star Wars re-releases in 3D. Did they? Yeah. I thought one of them came out. Uh, one did before LucasArts. Oh, that sucks, because I kind of wanted to see episodes 4, 5, and 6 in 3D. Uh, no, I don't. What, the good Star Wars? Yeah. I want to see 4, 5, and 6, but I don't want to see them in 3D. I actually wanted to see Phantom Menace in 3D, but I never saw it. Oh, I feel sorry for you already. Fuck, man. I know, I really wanted to see it in 3D. Well, LucasArts is dead, let's move on, because that's how life goes. Yeah, it's yes. dead like THQ. Who? That was a couple of weeks ago, or a month. We don't need to bring that up again. Oh, like, oh god, I just realized we were talking about Disney Interactive and THQ. Super Legends, go away! Stop coming up! <laughs> that Please. that won't be the last time you'll hear of it. Please oh my god. god. THQ. I, still have I still have THQ Power Rangers games I need to review, god damn it. Like that shitty Dino Thunder! Thanks, Shadow Snake. Best birthday ever. Yay. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, in lesser news, and more like a hooray type of thing, 
Colonial Marines for the Wii U is cancelled. Yes! You know, I know some people say that the Wii U barely has any games, but at least it doesn't have shitty games. Yeah, like Foffy, go have fun playing your Vita. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great he's not even getting the one game that, like, isn't in an R maker, like, oh, but he's like, how do we want that? <laughs> That's great. I don't want a game made by a creator of Cancel Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, and I actually wanted to rent that game until I saw the playthrough of it. Ugh. And I still need to upload part three because I'm lazy. I mean, all I just have to do is post it. It's actually available to go, but that's beyond the point. Um, yes. That's it. Sega basically came out and said, uh, yeah, it's not happening. No longer development. Well, since usually I only have like two news articles, tops, um, that's continuing this trend again. That's all I got for news. If anyone else has a news article, go ahead and say it or else we'll move on. I uh, I have something, uh, but uh, I know not too many people are going to be interested in here. Um, for anybody who's into import titles, uh, the PS3 title, uh, uh, Battle Ride War Kamen Rider, which is basically a Dynasty Warrior style game, with the Kamen Riders, uh, is going to have all, most of the original casts from most of the shows appearing in it. They've been announcing them weekly, and uh, there's more to come. Like, we've got people like the guy who played Tsukasa is going to be reprising his role. Most of the people from Blade are reprising their role. They just they just announced that the guy who played Devil Joker is going to be reprising his, reprising his role. I almost thought you said Devil Joe, and I would have just... No, him. no, no. <laughs> I'm Devil Joker from Blade. So, um, we're going to be getting a treat. The game comes out near the end of May, uh, and the pre-orders are open for the Super TV Sound Edition, which is basically, you get all the theme songs with it, which I think is a jip for an extra $30, but I'm going to be pre-ordering the regular edition for PS3. So I've been ripped off. 30 bucks. Pr pr pretty much. I mean, 30 bucks just to have theme songs? I mean, come on. Um, I do have something I'd like to say for news. Okay. Go. Um, so, anyone here familiar with Kane's Quest? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard a while ago that Telltale Games was supposed to release, like, reboot Kane's Quest, I believe? Yeah, I heard of it that. Um, they decided to just get the license back to Activision. Oh. Um, what happened is that they said that they have no re- I, I think it was along the lines of no resources, where they were trying to work on the game, but they couldn't really make something out of the license they attained by uh, Activision, so it's, they just decided to give it back to them. Which may most likely lead to Activision just putting the license in backstop. Oh, that sucks. You know, kind of like Konami's doing Bloody War. Uh, I mean, it's not like Aiding's still making fighting games. Oh, wait. And th and I know a lot of people don't really care that much about Kings Quest, at least the two guys here. But, it, but you know, Kings Quest has been part of my childhood. I would have loved to see it being reimagined and having a reboot because, well... To be frank, it really needs one. I, I'm not really a fan of King's Quest, but I can appreciate what it does for the adventure game genre and the RPG. Even if it was bullshit. <laughs> well, it yeah, the, it, it, it like I'll, especially the early ones, you have to be so specific. I'll just say King's Quest Five and leave it at that. Fuck up once, you're fucked. <laughs> Thank you for buying our game. Here's a death. Well, but the. Uh, but seriously, I, I, I really was looking forward to some some kind of a reboot, just to see if there's some life in the King's Quest uh, franchise and possible to be revived. Much like how Telltale Games made a, made a Back to the Future as an adventure game. I still need to pick that up. Yes, you do. Is the Wii version any good? Uh, um, It should be about the same thing as the consoles with a slightly reduced graphics, I guess. I, I found the Wii version for really cheap. And I thought about picking it up. I what matters what matters most is that it works, and I'm pretty sure it works. Okay. 
So I say PS3, Wii, PC, whatever, whatever floats your boat. All right. Let's... I mean, if it's really cheap, I'd say get it because the story is really good. I think it's only ten bucks right now, so go get it. You won't be disappointed by the storyline. Anyways, are we uh, all good for gaming news? Uh, unless you all want to talk about Ducktales. I thought we did last podcast or some podcasts. That would more or less be upcoming releases, dude. Oh well. Anyways, unless uh, it already came out, but I don't think it is. No, but they. I know they announced it, and that was it. That's yeah. about it for me. <laughs> That's about it. Okay, I guess. Um, well, that wraps up gaming news. So, how about talking about what's coming out in the future? And by future, I mean either this month or the month after this. Okay. All right. I got a little list here. Uh, most of this is gonna be slight repeats, obviously, but. What can you do? Because I don't want to go too far ahead. We could, like, save that for, like, next month or maybe next podcast. We'll see. But, um... And I'm not going to list everything I'm seeing on this, uh, list, most of all. I'm just going to try and get notable games out. Or sort of notable. Alright. We'll start with April 16th. We've got Injustice Gods Among Us. <laughs> Um, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers for the 3DS. I know he'll be buying that. Only one guy in the entire universe. <laughs> 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 no, of course not, but... A lot of people that won't be buying it, it's not Persona, so I don't care. Oh! Uh, I don't care for either, suck my... Oh, uh, Persona fans. They only care about Persona, not the rest of the franchise. I'm not even a fan of Persona, yet I got Persona 4 Arena. That tells, tells you a lot, doesn't it? And there's also something else that's coming out, and it is fully confirmed April 16th. Pandora's Tower. Right, I should probably pre-order that. Yeah, better, because I paid off my pre-order last month, when I thought it was coming out last month. Right, what day is this supposed to come out again? April 16th. So, well, time to save my money. Next Saturday. Wow, a Saturday? Okay. Let's see. I didn't think about that unless... Oh, no, sorry, not Saturday. I looked at my March calendar that I forgot to change. Whoops. Whoops. In fact... Okay, Tuesday, that makes more sense for me to lose this. Okay. Whatever, excuse my mistake. Why um, do games come out on payday? <laughs> My payday's Tuesday, get fucked, kid. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Dead Island Riptide is coming out on the 23rd. I don't care. Oh, Who does? I don't know. I, I never played Dead Island, so I can't really say I played it. like a few minutes, and I just... Scott, maybe... I know SCR played it. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't fill in for what he thinks about it, obviously. Yeah. Um, as a game, no one should give a fuck about Star Trek, the video game. Same day. Wait, that's a game? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That yeah. exists? It's a third-person shooter based on the new movie. Oh, so it's gotta have oh. a cover system, have four-player co-op. Oh, I might play that co-op. up when it's in the dollar bin. Uh, it, yep, it's Gears of War. <gasps> we got a Mega Man game coming out on the 25th! Wait, we do? Yep. Mega Man 4 for the 3DS. Too bad, it's not new. Oh. <laughs> well, in Mega Man news, they are releasing Rockman Crossover for the Android, and since the Android is open source, you can download Japanese games. Oh Whatever. boy. <laughs> Who wants to get a bad game? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to at some point so I can properly review it, but... Alright, um... This probably would concern Scott more, or interest him. Deadly Premonition Director's Cut for the PS3, April 30th. Wow, how long has Deadly Premonition been out? Fuck me if I can remember. I would I would have to say about five or six years. No. Are I you think sure? I have a feeling it could have been a 2009 game or 2010. That that's 
Oh. Don't quote me though, Wait, but un I unreal. know it wasn't an early Xbox title. And you said Mega Man 4, right? Yeah, maybe it's like a Virtual Console 3DS release. Oh, okay. Well, that might be worth downloading then, because that game's awesome. Oh man! And, it, I ho and it's hopefully it's not the Game Boy one, but I don't think there's a Game Boy Mega Man 4. There's a Game Boy Mega Man 4. I would laugh if it's that, but whatever. Um, the Vita's, yes, the Vita's game, just a game, Soul Sacrifice. Um, I believe we were told that's similar to Monster Hunter. And that's not enough for me. Then again, there's also Soul Eater. Or, no, was it? It's God's no. Eater. Yes, that was on PSP, which and none I of us here played. <laughs> and I don't care. So. Alright. Th that's April. There's obviously other games, but I didn't list them. Some are expansions, some are other stuff that I didn't feel like listing. So, let's go into May. Um, we've got Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut coming out on the 7th of May. Oh, I didn't know those they come out that soon. Yeah, There's same here. Is that a Wii U game? Uh, it's yeah. a Wii U port. Well, it's, su it's supposed to be the best version according to the guys, but we'll see. If I may add to that, um, I have read some news on it that... They're not going to make it a straightforward port, but they're going to try to make it the best version of all by obviously having Wii U controls and uh, having boss fights play out differently, New Game Plus, and yada yada yada. And there's a lot of new things to list. I'll at, le I'll at least give it a rent, but I'd say uh, I do love Deus Ex Human Revolution. I may give it a buy. I wasn't too fond of the Deus Ex game I got for PS2, so I don't know. Oh, don't tell me you Get played Invisible War. <laughs> I got it for two dollars. Did you? It, was it called Invisible War? I don't remember. If, if it, it was, I'm sorry. That is probably the worst way you could ever, ever get introduced. Yeah, even the developers was like, we can't believe we made this. Oh, bye, Furnace. What a shame. <laughs> uh... <laughs> But there's either the, the original or Human Revolution. That's the way to go, dude. I think I have the original. I think that's the one I have. Well, we'll, we'll see you later. Uh, let's move on. Um, May 14th, Metro Last Light. And I only have 2033 on my PC, not installed, and I probably won't be able to run it, so I haven't even played the first one. Oh, THQ. Who's publishing this game now? Good question. I didn't even pay attention. Oh, okay. Deep Silver. Who? <laughs> I'm sure I've heard of them somewhere, but who? I don't know. Okay. Apparently they. Pu uh, no way. That's Cal Ridge's own. Um, notable games they published. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Rated AO. Mm, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, you can look up later, but it, like, yeah, that's just publisher. The developers and the people obviously need the game, but whatever. And <gasps> we got a Mega Man game coming out. <gasps> what? Really? In before Mega Man Five. In after Mega Man Five for 3DS. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I hope June releases Mega Man 6, but... Uh, well, I would say if you're if you're looking at the Mega Man games for 3DS, you can skip May's release. <laughs> May, May's, May's, May's. Unless it's Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy, then you should get it, because it's amazing. Well, this list isn't being too specific. It's just saying it's getting a 3DS release. Is it Mega Man 5 or V? It says... I don't know! It's it's probably the NES one, but whatever. Moving on. Uh, we've got... Uh, Resident Evil Revelations for the consoles and PC. Ooh! Definitely getting the Wii U version. Ditto. So, uh, I guess so. I may, I may try out the PC version at some point. 
But definitely Wii U. Can, wait, is it going to have connecti connectivity with the 3DS? I don't believe so. Mainly because it's multi-platform, but that shouldn't be a factor. Maybe it's... I, I don't know. I was going to say, because if they could patch it, then when we go to Kineticon, I can play with you guys. Unless they add in split screen, but I don't think they'll do that. They traditionally add in split screen ever since I Resident Evil 5, and by ever since, I need one more game. You never know. Um, May 24th, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Hmm, I really Wait, should play that. Is, is this a new game, or is this just the Wii one in 3D? It's probably a new one, because I, I don't know. Again, I just know it exists. And that's going to be a 3DS release. I never even heard of this. This is my first time hearing about this. Okay, um... Appar according to what I'm reading, apparently it's a port? Oh, well, I have it for a Wii, so I'm, I'm okay without getting that. Hmm. Maybe I'll play the 3DS one, mainly, mainly so I don't have to deal with uh, motion controls, but I don't know. Motion controls aren't bad in the returns, but eh. <laughs> Unless they have you shake the the 3DS since it has the, the gyroscope in it or something. Maybe you stupid. Um, I'll list one or two more for May, and then we'll move on. Um, May 28th, uh, it's a game you probably never even heard of, mainly because the title got changed, and I think it's dumb. But it's Insomniac Games' uh, newest uh, release, Fuse. Hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of that. What was it originally one. called? It was originally called Overstrike, and it looked like a shooter with The Incredibles or something. Oh, I heard of that. That looked cool! Until EA happened! <laughs> <laughs> what are they thinking? This is going to be like the next Resistance, so let's buy them. Is it funny that I was rewatching Blondie's uh, Command and Conquer Renegade review today, and he said he wasn't gonna bash EA, and now all I'm thinking is I want to bash EA. <laughs> wow. Um. Oh, there's a game for May 23rd that I should probably mention. All right. Common Rider Battle Ride War. Of course. <laughs> Kill yourself. <laughs> Thanks, EA. Hello, we're EA, we're gonna publish our game. Yeah, you see that game you've got there with a lot of colors? No, if it's not three colors and they're all shades, you can't you can't make it. But but what well, incredible boring. It was a doesn't good look one. cool. Yeah, we don't care. We just want the hardcore gamers to buy it. Oh, and also make one of them pose like Commander Shepard. Uh, and and Isaac every Clark. FPS ever made. At least you don't see their faces, or it'd be like fucking face, like eyes up, chitting down, like everything else. Okay, I have one last uh, game to list for May, and it's for May 30th. And I'm just doing this just because, like, I don't care about it. I don't think anyone's gonna uh, care about it. Um, Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded. Is that a remake? Oh, uh, let's see. I don't think it's, uh... Oh, it, it's an enhanced remake of the 1987 release. Oh, it might be good, then. Ooh. Yeah, they're sticking point and click, so... There you go. That might be good, considering the last game was... Well, I'll get to that when I review it. So, yeah, how did you like what CJ gave you that game? Where was it? It Cass wasn't CJ, it was Cassie. They're one being now, alright? <laughs> I think we should get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to be reviewing that soon. Um, that's as far as I'm gonna go for this week. Probably by next week, uh, we'll move into May, June. I don't know. But, that's what's upcoming, and we, I think we spent a little too long on that. But, whatever. Whatever. Alrighty. Okay, um, I don't have a random number generator type of thing for recent pickups. That's usually what Scott ooh, does. Ooh, me, me, sit down. You're going last now, you stupid kid. You're grounded. Go to the principal's <laughs> this office. This is my form of fuck you, Dad. 
Go to the principal's <laughs> office. Um, I guess I should go then. Uh, hang on. I, I have a method of, uh, picking. Where's my rubber baseball? Uh, <laughs> don't throw it at the screen. Oh. It's rubber! It's not gonna injure it. Okay. I missed. Good. <laughs> Fuck. Where'd it go? Okay. Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh. Free throw. Oni, go first. Ladies and gentlemen, I said it the last time I was on this podcast, and now I have it. I have a Wii U. You didn't have one last time. Nope. I thought you've had that for months. Then why were you talking about Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking about what he just said. I said the next time I was on here, I was gonna have a Wii U. I now have a Wii U. I've been having it for a couple months since the last podcast. He has the Wii U, Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. No, I have I, the I, I understood that. Yet Wheel of Fortune. I don't think I'll ever understand. I still got banned from Bing. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so about the video games. Oh, yeah. Where are they? Okay, I got the Zombie U Deluxe set. Same. And the games I got, Zombie U, duh. I got New Super Mario Bros. U. I got Nintendo Land, downloaded version. And since then, I bought mo- a lot of Wii U games. I bought Balloon Fight, Trying to Director's Cut, Puddle, Mighty Switch Force Hyperdrive Edition, Little Inferno, F Zero, Nano Assault Neo, The Cave, Bit Trip Presents Runner Two, Chasing Aurora, and Punch Out. It's a lot of Wii U games I got. Most of them downloaded. Wow, downloaded F Zero. Get it with the time scrub. Get an inbox copy like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Download F Zero so you don't have to play your box copy. Har, har, har. Now for 3DS, I got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which is pretty damn good. And I got Mega Man 2, Bird and Beans, Metal Torrent, Metroid 2: Return of Samus. Castlevania The Avenger. Why? <laughs> Wait, the advent the Avenger? Never heard of the Avenger. <laughs> the Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> no, the this one of the shittiest Castlevania games you can ever get. Why? The Adventure. The Adventure. Thank you. I apologize. Donkey Kong. Marvel's the Castlevania Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> although although to be fair, I would love to see Simon Belmont teaming up with uh, Iron Man. Oh, yeah. Donkey maybe Kong. maybe Hawkeye. <laughs> okay. Donkey Kong? Oh, it's, it's that one where it's like a remake of the first, of the very first Donkey Kong with Mario trying to rescue, uh, Paula, I think's her name, and then, uh... I know turns... what Donkey Kong is. I'm not yeah. sure if he was saying more after game. Donkey Kong. Alright, the there game. you go. Uh, Dig Dug. Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge, which I finally beat after all these years. Yes. Yay. The original Mega Man. Starship Defense. 3D Classics Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus of Myth and Monsters. Kirby's Dream Land. Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble. Wario Land 2. Wario Land Super Mario Land 3. Super Mario Land 2, Super Mario Land, Mega Man 3, and Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. <sighs> For PS3, I got Vanquish downloaded, and uh, I won a game from Capcom. Oh. Bionic Commando. Hey. Oh, cool. Is is it the is it the next gen one? Next like, gen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of I kind of wish the game did a little better in spite of its flaws. Hey, I got it for free. I can't complain. Hey, I, I think you'll like it. it has, it's pretty challenging. Yeah, I had The controls are fucked. <laughs> um, yeah. This is the second time I ever won a free game. First time I won WWE 12. But yeah. 
And I got Vanquish. You already yeah. said Vanquish. Actually, oh. you know what I just remembered? La I actually won a Capcom game last time I won a free game. It's not your turn, kid. Yeah, it's not your turn. <laughs> but, I and, mean, this is years ago, so that's why I'm thinking. Yeah. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody wants to know the what the hell did I buy this for? So, here it is for the 360, the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's, a that point, is... it's a point and click adventure. On a console. On a console. Is a connect required? Oh, my Best opportunity, because you can't actually point and click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have voice recognition on Mass Effect 3 and uh, Dead Space 3, but point and click? No, we can't have that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all the games I got the la this time round. So, tell me, how would you suddenly afford all of those out of nowhere? Tax money... And you wow. couldn't save money for Monster Hunter, you dick! It was after! It was after I bought everything else! Well, excuse the hell out of me! I can't afford Monster Hunter, okay? <laughs> Son of a bitch! Even though I will say, I love Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just rustling your jimmies. Wow, that's it. You're definitely going last just for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright. So, but, any more? Uh, that, that's it. That's all of them. That's probably the worst example of gaming binging I've ever seen. I mean, <laughs> God. Next thing you know, you're in the negative zone of money. No way well, out. Well, at least you're gonna have to sell everything you have. Well, at least most of them were really good games. Yeah. Except maybe Castlevania yep. The Avengers. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> uh, Simon because Belmont. English is a stupid language, and we all speak it. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so who's next? Uh... Where's that baseball? Uh... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I guess that's me. It somehow missed and hit me in the face. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but... <laughs> that's, that means it's my turn. Damn you, physics. Yeah, I don't know how it friggin' works, but... Um... Um... Probably starting this week onward, or at least until the end of May, I'm gonna definitely be less and less with uh, gaming pickups, because I'm saving up for Anime North. And we'll explain Anime North probably by the end of the podcast, I'd rather not do it now. Um, I ended up picking up Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on release day, and I did not pre-order it, and that was more of a less, um, kind of a last minute decision. Like, uh -huh. I, I just went in after, like, morning work on that day, and I'm just like, okay. And I, I like, look, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll get it. And I'm trying to, like, save up for the trip, and I'm already breaking my promise by getting a $4 game, but... The game is good, so at least I'm not feeling bad about it. Not yet, at least. And the other game I got relatively cheap for... Four dollars, if I believe, at this um this pawn shop in my town that I should actually start looking into more often because it's actually pretty decent down there. Now that I think about it, I mean it's it's not that big, like say Game Over, but that's not a pawn shop. But I ended up getting Agent Under Fire for the GameCube, so I have two copies of the same game now. The thing is, the GameCube version is better because it loads faster and runs better than the Xbox version. Wow. I don't understand how. <laughs> Maybe this is what reviewers meant when uh, they said Turok Evolution on the GameCube was the best version. But, whatever. Um, I did play the GameCube version a little bit more because my disc seemed a little weird. I ended up finding out a lot of the pre-rendered cutscenes don't even play. Uh oh. It's just a black screen. The audio plays though, and you can still skip them and go straight to the game. So it's like a N64 game where you don't have 
a whole lot of uh, background to work off of, but you'll get straight into the game. This reminds me way back when my brother had Command & Conquer Renegade. I'm not sure if he pirated it, but when I, I, I played through the whole game and noticed there were no cutscenes. Like, even after I beat the game, it just went to straight to the main menu and I got confused. So I'm guessing that copy got fucked by completely having zero cutscenes. <laughs> so, you should... You should definitely have seen me when I was confused through the entire thing. <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, it's kind of like that, but... I'll probably get a... disc replacement. I mean, it's not broken like my Mario Kart disc or World of War disc, but... I don't want issues like that in my copies. You know, it's just something... But different. does multiplayer work? Yeah, including that, um... One stage with the looping music that Blondie likes. I should still have it on my Android Quote phone. Quote-unquote. I should, I should have that tune on my phone somewhere. Oh, God. Um, for games, that's it. But there's one thing at that pawn shop I mentioned that I got for 50 cents that may have been the best 50 cents I've ever spent. What? Ooh. I got myself a VHS tape. But it's not just any VHS tape. Oh god. It's the Nintendo Power Rumble Pack advertisement for Star Fox 64 on VHS. Oh, no. no Only Mario. includes the Mario doll torture. <laughs> no! Please, Mario! Please, no! <laughs> no! I got that That's... for 50 cents, and it works. <laughs> I'm happy. It came with the sleeve and everything. <laughs> that, that was... Honestly, forget Luigi's Mansion, forget double backflipping Bond. This was my purchase of the frickin' two weeks. <laughs> I will pay $10,000 for that. Wait, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Calm down, dude. <laughs> That's enough. You sound like you're gonna this. die there. This is the podcast. No, it was supposed to go like, That's enough! That's enough! Alright. Now! It's Angel Halo's turn. Oh boy, okay. Um, I got a decent load of games right here. Um, not, not a whole lot. Uh, some of the... Well, let me start over there. Um, well, I did get a good amount of... Take three. <laughs> now, I did get a good amount of games lately. Um, now, should I just go ahead and speak for three of the four of us here in the room for what we already have? I'm. Um, well, I got Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on both Wii U and on 3DS. What is that? <gasps> Oh, what? oh, Zero Master, I'll tell you exactly what it is. I mean, you've only played maybe uh, a I dozen... I mean, I've only played games. every game that's ever been released here in the franchise, <laughs> plus one that wasn't actually released here, but, you know, I don't know what that is. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you, it's a game. All right, good. What's the next one? <laughs> uh, but really, um, I love this. I love this game. Got both versions because, you know, what Wii U is online, 3DS isn't, but you can play locally and it works, especially with Wii U owners, and it works really well. Moving on, um, I also got Fire Emblem Awakening, mm. and I've been addicted to that game for like a week because the story is so damn good. Um, and it's also my first Fire Emblem game I've ever played. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed it a lot. I really loved the characters in the game. I played it all the way from beginning to end. It beat all the subquests, although the subquests were really tough. Which is why I had to come back to them uh, later in the game. And you do get in, you do get rewarded for doing just that, believe it or not. I won't go into detail, but let's just say you'll be glad that you did come back later. Um, and, um... It also has some spot pass features and all that. You know, you can recruit a lot of generics based on other characters. Okay, from Angel Halo, let's not explain the entire game now. 
Okay. Yeah, um, don't go into detail. I'm we're sorry, we're I way just, too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free to cut it out at some point. Um, now, and I got a couple of PlayStation 1 games. Um, two of them I noticed that Game Over Video Games had them, in, uh, had them traded in. So I had to get a friend of mine, Sassoon or Raven, since he lived closer to the store, to uh, get these games for me. I paid him back, of course. Um, I got the U.S. versions of Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22, trademark, and uh, Dragon Ball GT Final Bout. Ooh! Um, the Final Bout one was a later was a later re-release version. Oh, you know, have the same version that I do then. Yeah, but it's but it's pretty. But the gameplay, the game is identical to when it was first released. So. Oh God, that voice acting! Have you heard it yet? Yes, I've. <laughs> Play as Goku. You look strong. This should be a good fight. <laughs> as much as I don't like the game, I I can't help but laugh with it. Like it's like they, it's like they. I, I think it's like one of those things where they're like, "Oh, this will never catch on. Let's just make fun of it." <laughs> That's what I think. Um, and I also decided to get a. Uh, I also decided to get Time Crisis for PlayStation One. I actually already have a copy of this game, but I couldn't find my game disc anywhere, and this has been sitting at Game Over for months. The main difference between that to the one I have is that I don't have the actual PlayStation case that has the backslip and all. So for collection's sake, I figured I might as well get get another copy. It's pretty cheap anyway, like only 15 bucks, and the disc is in really good condition. Um. And I did download a couple of games on my Wii U, that being F-Zero and Punch-Out, the virtual console games, of course. Which I may have taught, I may have mentioned uh, in previous podcasts that Nintendo has this whole uh, anniversary, Famicom anniversary going on, where each month they'll be releasing a virtual console game for 30 cents. I believe next month, or this month, I should say, like halfway in, should be Super Metroid, so I'll definitely be looking forward to that. I think it's Kirby's Dreamland. Uh, Kirby's Adventure, I apologize. I'll, I'll have to uh, double check on that later. Yeah. See, see, we are the most accurate source of people you should hear from. <laughs> um, but yeah. uh, um, At least it's better than Tokusatsu Corner. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you over myself being awesome. Oh, sir! What do you say, fat boy? <laughs> Alright, you guys are on probation for five fucking podcasts. Oh, come All on! Right, settle nope. down. It'll probably be that many until I get on again anyways. <laughs> Alright, settle Deal down. I only, I only got a couple more to go. Um, let's see. I also received a gift from a uh, Jazu Chen in the form of Dota 2, which I have ne- haven't installed yet, but I'll be sure to give it a shot someday. Thank you, Jazu Chen, for yeah. your kind donation. Prepare to get addicted to that, because every person I talk to who owns that game gets addicted to it. Damn, I forgot about Dota 2. Shit! Jazu Chen gave me a copy as well. But you probably can't run. I think he asked me, and I said, no, thanks. <laughs> I'm like, no, Dota's bad. <laughs> um, I think that's it for games. I know I said a couple more, but oh, actually, I missed one. Uh, Sonic and All Stars Racing Transform for Wii U. Ah. Um, I'm sure some. I'm sure all of you here have heard reviews about it, about it being so good. It's been compared to Mario Kart, and to some, they may say it's a successor to Diddy Kong Racing. I think we talked about that last time when I mentioned I got it, so... I'm pretty sure you... Talk. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. So, long story short, um, the only downside I can say about it is that it froze my Wii U after three races. Well, the demo froze my Wii U. Think about that. I, I think it was right after I updated it, too, so I'm not sure if it's just instability issues or maybe it's my hardware. I really hope it's not my hardware. But... There you go. Um, I have that as well. It's fun to play. And there is a couple of accessories I should uh, bring up. Now yeah. I got... Ah, come on. Um, You're already going longer than Oni, technically, I believe. Well, just real quick. I got the Monster Hunter uh, 
armor thing for the 3DS. And this might interest some people. Um, I've actually had this one for a while, but the only reason I'm bringing this up is because when last time I went to Best Buy here in America, in Texas, just to be more specific, I guess, um, they had they have the Nyko Power Grip for your 3DS, which is basically an external battery that you can get for like ten dollars now. And it and it's really good. So if anyone needs extra batteries and and if their Best Buy is like selling it for ten bucks, give it a go if you can. It's helped me a lot. that up. It's helped me a lot, especially when I was on, especially when I was on an airplane. And that's the end of the game. Time for one more. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Okay, Zero, come into your uh, rounded corner. It's your turn. You're not gonna throw a ball at him. I'm sorry, no. but I wasn't paying attention to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're definitely banned. Uh, you're. <laughs> Alright, anyways. Wow, all I have to say is wow. I thought I was gonna take a long time, but apparently not. So, um, I'm just gonna get out of the way. Something that I most people probably already know. I got a Wii U. I got the Zombie U version, which means I have three games in total for it, and you probably all already know what it what they are. Yep. But I'll tell you anyways. Zombie U Nintendo Land and Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Those are the only games I have for it so far. Oh, you didn't get new Super Mario Brothers, you? Not yet. You need to. I will. I'm, I'm trying to save money right now. Con season's coming up. Yeah, same here. Anyways, um, I'm not including download titles because I did download Punch Out and uh, that's about it. And F Zero, I downloaded those. So, anyways, um. I took advantage of last last week. I took advantage of the Easter sale that was going on at EB Games in my. I, I think it was a Canadian sale, I guess. And they had games up to ninety percent off. And let me just go over the list of games I got. Um, none of these have been opened yet because I haven't had time to play them because Monster Hunter, and I work forty five hours a week. So, um, but let me just go down the list. Okay, first DS. Magical Star. Uh, it uh, looks like a. I think it's uh, one of those DS games where you use the touchpad to do magical spells. That's all I know about it. It was a dollar. Also for a dollar. Um, From the Abyss for the DS. Uh, uh, this is an. Uh, I thought it was an Atlas game, but no, it's not an Atlas game. But yeah, it's a. It's a. It looks like a strategy RPG. I don't know. Um, this game I've been thinking of buying for years, and I got it for two dollars. Orcs and Elves for the DS. Um, a little, a, a cool little dungeon crawler. Can't wait to play that. And I have been debating on this game for a while, but it was uh, on sale for two dollars. Mystery Dungeon for the DS. And I think the sequel's coming out for 3DS, if I'm right. I can't remember. Anyways, all right. I got one PSP game because it was a dollar. Parappa the Rapper. Wow. Uh, I don't have a copy of it for PS1, so I thought a dollar for PSP? Uh, okay. So you get the kick and punch? They had a couple of copies, and I thought of getting them, but I'm like, anybody who has it probably already has it, so. I don't have it. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aww. Okay, PS Triple. Um. I got Monster Madness Grave Danger, which I think is the sequel to Monster Madness. I haven't played either Monster Madness game, but uh, it was a dollar, and this is multiplayer. So, <laughs> there you go. Wait, which Monster Madness? Um, Grave Danger. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Here we go. Alright, next for two dollars, Genji Days of the Blade for the PS3. I heard this game's pretty good. So, $2? Okay. Alright, for a dollar, I got Dark Kingdom for the PS3. Um, like, actually, the guy at EB recommended this one. So, we'll see if it's any good. And, okay, the 1360 game I got for a dollar Rise of the Argonauts. Also recommended by the clerk. And I'm like, hey, dollar? Sure, why not? Alright, now Wii games, and now uh, this will be the end of my list. 
Um, first on here, a game I've been debating about getting for a long time, but I finally picked up Sin and Punishment Star Successor. And I got disc protection on this baby. Um, <laughs> some of you might get mad at this one. For a dollar, I picked up Anubis 2. Wow! Kill yourself. I knew that Wait, was Wait, what game? What? Did you say Anubis 2? Yes. Hmm. Uh, I also picked up Spray for a dollar for the Wii. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's not a spray painting game, like I thought it was. It's apparently a action platformer. And the last game I got, and this is an Atlas game, this is also a dollar, Baroque. I don't know anything about it, but it was an Atlas game, it was a dollar, it looked cool, I thought, hey, okay. <laughs> and there's the $15 I spent at EB Games. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Lots of Monster Hunter. Huh. Mon Hunt. Alright, uh... <clears throat> that took a long time to go through that. Uh, alright. I guess, um... Now that that's over with... Let's proceed to our discussion topic. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can't you wait. You workers. Uh. Now, for previous podcasts, if you've been paying attention, um, well, whenever we've talked about something like the next Xbox or the PlayStation Four. We've kind of been slightly bringing up the used games uh, type of debate when it comes to these new consoles and how, like, the next Xbox won't, like, support used games and will have the always-on DRM. And PlayStation 4 is basically stating that it may or may not be up to the developers to do that DRM thing. Um, I think it's safe to say that we should just in general talk about used games as a whole like what it means for us and why it's important and I'm bringing this up because there was an article I glanced at at how GameStop is probably saying that uh, when the new consoles come out they're basically doomed mainly because the only game the only system that would possibly support uh, used games as of right now is the Wii U and we're talking about the next generation of consoles. So after reading that I just thought like maybe we should just discuss about this whole used games issue like we could go back to like previous gens and like of course now. Well, So that's what we got. Well this generation they were kind of experimenting with DRM and even EA acknowledges that DRM doesn't work. So it's interesting that entire consoles are going with it. Like, like don't don't get me wrong or anything. Like, I'm a computer tech. It's pretty much impossible for you to have no internet ever. But that doesn't mean the internet doesn't cut out. Like. Even at our work, the wireless that I use, it cuts out all the fucking time. Because so many people are on the network. Mm Mm-hmm. And, I mean, DRM doesn't work because, I mean, look at the disaster that is SimCity. And it's not a DRM game, but it's running on the same type of idea that DRM is. Um, well, I, I mean, EA openly said that it wasn't DRM, but it pretty much is. I mean, here's the problem with uh, the in the the upcoming in cloud gaming and all that. If you're always online, 
even when you're playing single player, if if your internet goes out for a day, you can't play your games. And I couldn't tell you how pissed I would be if I if I worked really hard for a week, came to a weekend, and then my Saturday was I couldn't play any games because my internet didn't work. I'd be pissed off. Really pissed off. Hmm. I think another example of the whole always on thing was um, um, Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. That didn't go well because a single player game, uh, they, they couldn't even connect at launch. It was, that was a disaster, but I think SimCity was still far worse. SimCity had the same problem. People couldn't connect. I think, um, I haven't played it, but I uh, watched a, a Lazy Game Reviews review of the game. Apparently, when you make a city, it's stuck to the server you started with. So, if you picked a busy server when you started the game, then you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, and not only that, the game doesn't store the data on your computer, it's stored on the cloud. So, yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> But, I mean, just use games in general. Like, remember when that whole rumor was out that Sony had patented something for that looked like DRM technology? Mm -hmm. Well, if they go through with this, they're dead. They can't afford to not have the used game market. And I say that because they're in the red. They're so far in the red that if the PS4 isn't like their saving grace, they're fucked. And some people will only buy consoles to play used games. Because you have people who can afford who can afford the console but can't afford the games at full price. Or then you have people like my brother who just say, fuck the system, I don't want to pay sixty dollars for a game because the developers don't deserve it for some reason. Hmm. Um Yeah, just I'm looking at the used game market. I, I usually always go for it, because again Considering how much games are now, sixty dollars, um, that's quite a lot. Like, it's obviously not the most expensive thing you can ever get, but mm. for for something that you're basically committed to after shelling out four hundred dollars or more, maybe less, on a console, it's still quite a bit. Because when if you keep buying a bunch of sixty dollar games in the long run. You basically spent way more than the console. Do you want to hear how much Monster Hunter 3 U cost me after taxes? How much? Over eighty dollars. That's Canadian, right? Yeah, but like, j no, but he, this is just an example. A sixty dollar game for us, it's either fifty nine ninety nine or sixty nine ninety nine, and after taxes, we have something like a ridiculous amount. We have like twelve or thirteen percent tax. So, that's almost $100 for one game. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, you guys kind of get screwed over we, there. We, we kind of do get screwed. That's why when I go to the States, I try to take advantage like that 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 GameStop thing with all the PS2 games. Yeah. But, I mean... That's gone, by the way, I believe. Oh, yeah, well, I, I that's why I jumped on it when I could. But... Just something else I think I'd mention. I mean, if used games completely went away, I'd be pretty much stuck to the bargain bin all the time. Because I, I like I like example. I just bought Assassin's Creed because it was ten dollars. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Hell, if if used games went away, um, then like GameStop, uh, like the one GameStop guy said, they probably wouldn't be around anymore. Which at least over here would suck because I don't really have game stores. I don't want to go to Walmart and spend shit. They they don't really have a good selection other than like newest releases and like woo. The best part Games about Walmart GameStop has a pretty big variety at least, even for like current consoles and stuff. And sometimes at least before they get rid of it, older stuff. And if that's gone, the only place I got is that one pawn shop I mentioned in gaming pickups, and that's not a lot, which means. If that eventually goes away, I gotta order online for the rest of my fucking life. Well, I only go to Walmart to buy games to buy from Bargain Bin. That's pretty much it. I don't buy 
uh, main games, unless they have some kind of crazy deal on that GameStop just, not GameStop, I mean EB, because I'm Canadian, um, if EB just isn't offering or won't match, then I'll go to Walmart. Or they have like some special bundle that only Walmart has. But that those are far and few between now because they don't, they don't, they just carry the new games. They don't really care about bundles or anything anymore. That's more of a uh, EB and GameStop game, GameStop thing. I mean, um, if GameStop died, EB would probably go with them, and that leaves Microwage. And Microwage is dying. Or not Microwage, sorry, Microplay. If I may, if I may speak my side. <clears throat> uh, I, I just have one more thing to add. Um. Mm -hmm. And with with uh, companies trying to battle used games, like I kind of see what they're going for, because in reality, for so like used games, in terms of like money earned off of used games, developers or anything don't get any of it. Well, and they just say, well, it screws over the developers if we get it like cheaper than full price. Here's my thing. Here's my thing with that. First of all, you've got three problems. The first one is, one, technically the game was already paid for in full f once already. If it's used, it's already been paid for. So they already got the money in it. Um, I remember Angry Joe going on about that in his Homefront review, and it's like, yeah, exactly right. Some guy bought it at some point, so you yeah. practically... Oh, if it's have used, something. you ha there's a high chance that somebody paid full price for it. So, yes, you're not getting the sale off of that person coming back and not buying a new game. But you, by the time they go to buy it new, it doesn't matter anymore. Like it's like don't make like, rather like, have like, them forever. How much do you think they made any money off of selling those copies for ten dollars a piece, brand new? I don't no, think so. No. Obviously not. They didn't make any money on that. But the other problem here is games are too expensive to develop these days. That's why so many studios are dying if they have one bad game. Why don't you not... Like, why don't we... How come we can't... Like, I mean... Okay. Before this generation, we didn't need millions upon millions of dollars to develop a game. Why all of a sudden do we need all this money for it? And... If you have a bad game, it screws you. If nobody buys it, it screws you. And my next question is, my next thing I should say, if you, okay, fine, I will play, I'll play your game. If if you don't want to use games around anymore, fine. But every game that's $60 better be worth $60. And when I say that, every game that comes out on the market better be 100% good. Like, every single game has to be good. Otherwise, you need the used game market. Mm hmm And it's impossible to have every single game be good, because it's never going to happen. So, you know what, developers? Fuck yourselves. And with also another thing with used games, like, um... Like, say someone's unsure about, like, getting a game at full price. Like, in terms of the game itself, it's like, hey, you know, I don't know if I want this. I don't think it'd be interesting. Then later on the line, they find it cheap in the bargain bin, they actually pick it up. Then, then let's say, um, they actually end up really liking it, then whatever game that, um, like, whatever developer made that game he got in the used bin, he'll probably look out for what they're doing if they don't, you know, die or something. Dude, that's totally me. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I- just like, well, this, this is a good game, I want to see what other things these guys can do, I have faith in them. That's but, pretty much how I paid attention to Assassin's Creed. I this I just bought Assassin's Creed One used and haven't played it till like a year later. Then I, all of a sudden, then like a year or two years later, I don't remember. Then when I finally played through it, I'm like, oh shit, I got to play through the sequels now because I really love it. Yeah, because now that I bought Assassin's Creed One, I want to get the collection. So yeah, with um used games, you can pull in people that were unsure. They can probably be confident to shell out full price on the next product because they weren't sure at first you know what you know what that's why used games are pretty useful hell let's put it this way if there's no used game market then there'd be like no retro game market either of exactly. course that's irrelevant now but and angel by irrelevant sorry. i mean like main companies don't like obviously do retro games but there's retro game stores those are all used 
people still go for that. Especially if they can't find games anymore, because you can't put brand new full $60 games out forever. They eventually become used, because they can't print anymore. So, what is... Okay, here's something that I just thought of. Um, this is something that the game Overthinker talks about a lot of the times. Preservation is becoming a really big problem. 50% of the movies made before 1950 are gone. 50%. That means 50% of the er of earliest fit cinema, it's gone because it wasn't preserved properly. What's going to happen if the game if we stop having these games? We're going to lose generations of gaming. Because yeah. I mean, you can say big titles will get re-released over and over again. But what about flagship titles or like games that ended up being like cult classics but just didn't make enough money to warrant ever getting re-released or ever getting sequels it it it's unfortunate because they're gonna die off and one more thing I want to say if they want to get rid of the used game market you know maybe sell the game for forty dollars instead of sixty I mean anarchy reigns was thirty. <laughs> And so was uh, Insect Armageddon, and I picked that up. So, sorry, Angel, you were trying to say a piece before. I'm sorry. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah like ten minutes ago. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, uh, I hadn't even said a word, so... <laughs> okay, uh, you two can have the floor. Like, okay. Uh, hey, so. Angel, can I start first? Can you let Angel go? Cause all right, kind of right. unfairly interrupted him. Okay, go ahead. Um, now, I do try my best to get newer copies of the games that I feel are going to be good investments and that I feel might deserve some form of chance and sometimes are impulse buys. And 90% uh, of my impulse buys are buys I regret, <laughs> mainly because they were not worth the $60. But my point is, I do try to buy these, new, buy these games brand new as as the publisher demands because I do because I do want to be part of the statistic that says that I, I bought this game brand new and sometimes I'll regret that entirely but my point is again <laughs> is that I buy them new when possible but sometimes it's just as mentioned earlier it's just not possible to buy them new anymore Games, games, especially in the older days, they're pra some of them can range from, you can probably find them at a pawn shop, to uh, good fucking luck, to, oh, you'll find it on Amazon for like a thousand dollars, kind of rare. And this, this is why it's kind of necessary to have used games, because there are, even though it's kind of, even though people find ways to back up these games on the internet and be able to download them on your computer, a lot of people still prefer getting physical copies of these games. Um, like NES games, N64 games, PlayStation games, even games for consoles you've probably never heard of. You know, people like to collect physical, physical copies, and we need that so people can re-experience those games again. That's why we got reproduction game systems, at least those that they, that other people are able to make on systems that lost their patent, like the NES, for example. That's why, I think that's one of the reasons why you see, you see uh, replicated NESs around at used game stores, uh, like the like the Retro Duo. Um, and Newer consoles, obviously, we have used games that are completely playable on our 360s, PS3s, Wii's, Wii U's, DS, 3DS, PSP, PlayStation Vita. But, uh. And then you have stuff coming up, and you have stuff that's trying to coerce the, the customer into buying these games new and one way to do it is on these online plat passes that supposedly restrict some content from you in some form um and going back to uh zero and unreal mentioned about how the publisher developer got the money anyway 
it kind of makes you wonder why they even bother locking half the content. Not to mention it's something that requires the internet to unlock. So let, let's let's think about this a little deeper. With games, with games like let's say Metal Gear Online on Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence. Uh, say what you will, whether the game is good or bad. Um, the multiplayer part was the big, was one of the big things about that game's release, and now you can't play anymore because of those servers. I believe we talked about, well, you guys talked about uh, servers and whatnot in pre- in a previous podcast. But that and a new Metal Gear Online is basically dead, and we have no way to play it otherwise. Now that's gone. Oh well, at least we can still play used games. You know, games that are no longer in print, games we can still get physical copies of as long as our systems can play it. Then you got systems like possibly the PS4 and what seems likely to be the three, the new uh, Xbox, the Durango, I believe is what they call it. Which is basically saying, um, if you got used games, well, screw you. And... It get, and it just seems unfair to the player, especially with something like online passes. Uh, internet goes out, you buy a used copy of a game that you can probably play online with. Uh, what happens when uh, you, what happens when suddenly PSN or Xbox Live is out? Well, you can't use your online pass. That means you'll have to crack the game yourself, and not many. And some people either won't go through the effort or just don't know how to do it. So. It's just inconveniencing the customer when it when it's so unnecessary. And that's also why I pretty much refuse to buy certain other games like PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Good gameplay. And although I don't agree with the way it's been promoted, like especially how they're advertising certain characters, but online pass. No. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not supporting that practice. Unless your game is really good, I'm not supporting that practice. Um, here's one thing that's part of the problem, too. And, um, it's... It, I'm blaming GameStop for this, because they're the ones who do this. Yes. Um, selling new games used for $5 less, and then taking all the profit. And most of the time, the used games that they have up that are $5 less than the brand new copies are copies that they let their employees rent out. Hmm. And, or games, or here's the other thing, games that they've gutted that they're just decided, oh, we're gonna charge this for $5 less than the new copies and then take all the profit for it. This is probably one of the reasons why companies are saying, we don't want we don't want to use games anymore because GameStop is stealing profits from them on new games. This isn't right. People should not be GameStop should not be allowed to do this. There should be something that says preventing them from do this from doing this. Like it's I mean it's it's pretty pathetic if you're gonna buy a used copy of a brand new game just because it's five bucks less, but. But people do it, and they get all the profit for it. I think there should be there should be something in place so that GameStop is not allowed to sell used copies of games that are brand new. At least give them a couple weeks to get, you know, to be out before they're allowed to sell used copies of it. Because that's probably the main reason why so many companies are like, yeah, fuck used games, because we're... We're... We're losing an entire purchase on a game when it's brand new. Like, I don't think that should be allowed. I think, I mean, they could buy, if somebody buys a game, they don't like it, they take it, they bring it back, or they want to sell it used, or they buy a game, they beat it in a week, and they bring it back. Sure, that's fine, but don't sell it used right away. Give the game a couple weeks to breathe and have sales before you resell games. Like, day one! You can get used copies of games day one they come out from GameStop. That shouldn't be possible. That shouldn't happen. They should, if people want to trade in their game and get used credit for it or whatever, don't put it on the shelf right away. Because that's not fair. 
It's it's not. And I, like I said, I'm in defense of the game companies here. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. And I that's probably the biggest reason why um, game companies are lashing out at used games. I do agree to that. I do find it. I do find that kind of ridiculous. Now that you mention it, like I, Assassin's Creed Three when it came out, they had used copies of Assassin's Creed Three a week after the game came out for literally five dollars less than what they were selling the regular game. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" This is EB doing this, but they're owned by GameStop, and GameStop can call the shots with them. So. It's ridiculous. I don't think they should be allowed to do that. Anyways, I'm sorry. Oni? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, that's a pretty good point, but y'all missed, I think, one thing. We were talking about new games, used games, what would happen to that market. There's another market that's still kind of there. Rentals. Mm. Yep. I know it shouldn't count, but in technicality, it is kind of used games in a way as well. For rentals. You you Americans are lucky. You have a... <laughs> you guys have a dedicated rental service, Gamefly. The last... There's very, very few rental stores left in my town, and very, very few of them have video games. So, well, I can't go rent a game anymore. There's this well, really, I really good one in my town, but they closed down, and I didn't even know they closed down. I still have a local video store, believe it or not. You know, speaking of rental services, uh, Zero, they, I believe there's technically is a online service that's kind of like uh, Gamefly. Not in Canada yet. Uh, there is one in Canada. If you're talking about online, I'm not counting that. Not online. What are you talking about, then? Uh, let me double check on the name. Because, here's the funny thing. Um, they're supposed to change the commercials when, uh, we get American feeds for shows. A lot of the times they don't. And I saw Canadian channels advertising Gamefly. And I thought, oh, maybe Gamefly's in Canada. Nope, not in Canada yet. They're just like, okay, then why are you advertising it? <laughs> Uh, right. I think I think I found the name of it. All right, um, just edit that little part out. I apologize. Okay. Uh, like I was saying, rentals. There's, they should be counting as used games, unless you're the first guy to get it, the first guy to rent it. Then it's new to you. But then as soon as you take it back, it's used to them. So technically, you're not buying a used game. You're renting that game. That physical copy. What? What if the PS4 and the next Xbox do like they said said they're gonna do? It's not only gonna hurt GameStop, but it's gonna hurt GameFly as well. Mm -hmm. When you think about it. Unless the game is first in your queue. Yeah. Well, that's the that'd be the only reason. But I doubt GameFly would actually do that because they you're gonna. Eliminate used games, you're pretty much eliminating rentals as well. And rentals is what keeps this part of the economy going. Especially with the movies as well. I mean, you, yeah, nowadays we have Netflix, we have Redbox for that. I understand that. And hell, Redbox, they have some games in their, in their kiosks. So that still kind of counts. I'm saying this, what happens if... Sony and Microsoft make good on their promise. DRMs, no used games, all that stuff. You're not just hurting the ones who want to buy used games. You're hurting the ones who want to rent as well. Yeah, and I mean, getting back to the thing, again, people who buy your console can't necessarily afford to buy the games for it, too. Just because they can buy the console doesn't mean they can afford the games. So, People just won't buy your console because they don't want to pay full price for games. Again, like, I know this is a bad example, but my brother, he doesn't like paying full price for too many games, except unless it's something like Skyrim or Monster Hunter. Then he'll pay, he'll say, take my money. But 
Otherwise, he won't pay. He'll bar. He borrows from friends a lot of the times, or he buys games used. No one will buy a sports game ever again. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> oh, thank God! There'll be there'll be no more Madden. But you know, but if if I may men- if I may mention this also, um, there's all there's also word around about the uh, digital games possibly being the norm in the future. Well, I mean, cloud gaming is inevitable. It's going to be cloud is going to become everything. It's inevitable. Might not happen this generation, might not happen next generation, but it's going to happen. Eventually, physical copies of games will be gone. And that's something that we're going to have to get used to. Exactly. But But, for right now, mm -hmm. I'm talking about now, not like two, three generations down the road where we're old and gray and half of us are dead. Okay? I'm talking like... Shit. I'm talking about like the now. What happens? If Microsoft and Sony make good on their promise, it's that double—it's a double-edged sword. You're not only hurting the people who want to buy used games, you're also hurting the people who want to rent. Because yep. if you're going to get rid of used games, that means you're basically saying we're getting rid of rentals. It getting rid of the rental and used market is a huge risk. Something Sony can't afford, Microsoft can kind of afford it. But I mean, I don't know—I don't know about you. But I've used Windows 8. Not a lot of people <laughs> want to buy Windows 8. Every time I have to, I work at a, I work at a computer uh, repair place, and we also, uh, we also set up com- new computers. I've set up Windows 8 once over the course of how long I've been working there. All other computers I've set up have been Windows 7. Why do you think that is? Nobody wants Windows 8. Exactly. Here, you want me to tell you how to set up Windows 8? Here, you get the Windows 8 disk, you put it in the toilet, you take a piss on it. There you go. But that's well, what if it's already installed? And Here, you got no, no, no. Here, here's how you set up Windows computer. 8. When you put the disk, when you get the disk, buy the downgrade rights and get Windows 7. <laughs> because it costs you something like 20 bucks. If you own Windows 8, if it costs you 20 bucks, you can get a copy of down uh, a downloaded copy of Windows 7 as long as you have the Windows 8 disk. There. Your, your our OS is fixed. <laughs> exactly. But no. Oh, like, so that's like, that's how they boost their sales. That that was yes. that was a, just an example of Microsoft. I mean, <laughs> Windows 8's doing okay. Uh, if you own a PC, you don't want it, but if you own a tablet, it's great. Um but Microsoft is, is specifically them. They're taking a huge risk if they're going with this, because they're they pretty much if they if this is all true, all this rumor stuff is true. The nails in the coffin. They're going to be in third place. I can guarantee they're going to be in third place because yeah. if Sony decides, if Sony might at first not say anything and they might try to slide DRM in there a couple times. Then they'll notice how badly they're doing, and how badly Microsoft is doing, and then go to booster sales to go, Oh, okay, you know what, this DRM thing, we've coded it out of the OS. So, uh, no more DRM on the PS4. And then people will buy PS4s, and less people will be buying Xbox whatevers. Yeah. That's the thing I'm talking about. It just... That's gonna hurt, too, that DRM. Again, with the used games rental market. Okay. Okay, it basically, just, let's just make this blunt. Microsoft, if you pu- if you do this, you're going to be third place. You are going to be third place. Because no yeah. one will want to buy a console where they have to spend $60 every two weeks. On top of the $60 to play online every year. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna stand for it, to be honest. I'm not gonna stand here and be like... When the next Xbox comes out and there's a, oh, it's all DRM. Yeah, fuck you. I'm let, done with you. Let, let me level with you guys. I have Xbox games, but what do I mostly use it for? Watching videos. I don't even play games on my Xbox. Because of the, the market isn't very appealing to me. And then if you make a new Microsoft console, and I don't care about the games, I'm not going to care about your console. You know, come yeah. to think of it, when was the last time I got a 360 game? Like, did I... I I bought a lot of them recently because they've been in the bargain bin. 
the the testament of Sherlock Holmes, like I said, was the last 360 game I bought. <laughs> Anything else I rented. But and yeah, I don't. I play video games. I don't go on my 360 and be like, oh, I can order a WWE pay per view with that. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, here's another thing: the Ouya and the Steam Box are also being put into play. The Ouya has Android on Android OS on it. An open source OS uh, that's based off of Linux. Um, it's not going to compete with the other consoles because it's not really that's not its market. But people like open source. They like having the idea of getting free content and being able to have multi-platform content on their tablet, phone, whatever. And the Android OS is open source. You can make your own games on the Android OS if you want. You can. And yes, emulators exist for it, and they are legal. Um, the ROMs okay. just aren't, but that's a loophole. And people will buy Oya's and Android smartphones and whatever just to play old games on. And the Steam Box. Steam always has crazy deals on. Like, crazy. Like, how many times... Every time I get on the podcast, I hear the podcast, I swear to God, Scott's gonna say he impulse bought something on Steam. And I mean, oh, just, just wait to hear me on Christmas and summer times. It, it, Look at yeah, all the like, money I got! Binge, 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 Steam, binge. Like, doesn't Steam like have a deal like every week at least? Yes, like, every couple of days they'll have like a deal on two games. And you, you know, you know what's great though with the Steam box? It's not going to be as powerful as a high end PC. It's not. But uh, the advantage of having the Steam box is is the fact that you won't have to upgrade your PC if you want to play a new game. You can just get a Steam box, and yeah, your settings will be a little less than you might than you would if you had a high-end PC. But you know what? You won't have to go out and buy that $300 graphics card to play a new game. So, you know what? <laughs> Forget what I said. Microsoft will be in fifth place. <laughs> so... I, the Steam Box could kill it if they go with if Microsoft goes with DRM. The Steam Box will eat its babies alive. And the Ouya, Ouya, well, that it'll sort of be the hipster console, I guess. But people will still buy it because it's a hundred dollars and it's open source. So why do you think Linux is so popular? Oh, oh yeah, it's just oh. The ones that are the hipsters, Steambox, the Oya, those are going to be the guys to look out for in the next couple of generations. I keep hearing about the Steambox, and I'm kind of excited because I, I might be a techie, a PC tech, but I upgrade my computer to do video editing, not play games. <laughs> I actually want the Steambox now. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I can play it on my fucking TV and not have to upgrade it. Yeah, man, 1080p. <laughs> now I have to upgrade a graphics card or anything. I'm not a computer junkie. I'm a gaming junkie. There's a difference. Yeah, building, okay, a, building, a, gaming a, building a PC isn't, like, it's it's not hard, but it's not easy either, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So a lot of people will probably jump on the uh, option to have, ooh, a box that'll do it all for me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Anyways, Unreal, you've been quiet for a bit. Have you got anything else to add? I said my piece earlier, really, and you guys are practically filling in oh. like, what else I would have added. Uh, we could go yeah. on literally for hours about this, but maybe uh -huh. we should just end it by saying the used game market needs to be here for at least another couple of generations until cloud gaming takes over everything and everybody can transition. But The uh, rental market needs to stay, period. Same. Like, as of right now, it's too early to cut out the used game and rental market because... It isn't just the fact that the games are cheaper, and some people will only buy used or whatever games because those people exist, and you're not going to change their mind. But preservation is important, too. Because, again, I, I brought this up earlier, 50% of the movies for 1950 are gone. The, there's no copies of them ever. They're gone. Do we want the same thing to happen to gaming, too? No. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants that. That's why retro gaming is so popular, because people can go buy their favorite Super Nintendo game 
If their copy breaks, they can get another copy by going to the retro store and have fun again. If in 10 years, I want to be able to... If, if my Monster Hunter disc stops working, I want to be able to get another copy without having to, you know, pay full price for it again because I already paid for it. By the okay. way, while I'm talking about it, somebody... Can some can can we please get Earthbound on the Virtual Console? I really don't want to spend a hundred. <laughs> uh, too bad because Japan got Mother Two on Virtual yeah, Console. Yeah, fuck that. I now that you mention it, I've actually read up on legal issues behind that, and um, that's it's pretty huge. Yeah, yeah, I know all about the music thing and such. It's it's a shame, but goddamn, please release it on the Virtual Console. If you're gonna do it in Japan, do it here too. Come on. If only that cost him so much money. Please. Yeah. Anyways. So, I guess that does it for the discussion topic this week. Felt like that went on pretty long, but that tends to happen in the podcast, obviously. So. And now it's time for disappointment. In the form of viewer questions. I say disappointment because only one this time. Before, we've had, like, more than one. At least maybe three questions, but we're back to single question podcast again. Maybe oh. that'll change, but... I wonder who what? it's from. Yeah. Ah, <clears throat> go, go! <sighs> wow, I didn't think I ended up sounding like that. Whatever. Uh, oh. Yeah. I, I guess he really is here. But he's not. Whatever. Spirit. I can hear him getting injured. As he thought about that name. Anyway, question. Why does he have to take over my body? But whatever. Uh, okay, what Akago has this time. For those of you who have played it, could you briefly go into what the appeal of Monster Hunter is? I've heard a lot of people talk about it and seen plenty of gameplay footage, but I'm skeptical whether it might be for me. <laughs> Zero, can you answer this? You've played the most out of the series. Well, Akago... First, you have to ask yourself a couple questions. Do you have friends you play with online who have the game? Are you going to be upset that there's not an expansive story? And how do you feel about fighting monsters over and over again to get new parts to make armor and weapons? If you have negative thoughts towards all of those questions, Monster Hunter is not for you. However, in my opinion, being that I've been playing since the first game, Monster Hunt, this the fun of Monster Hunter is the fact that the, if you fought every mo every monster once, the game would be over pretty quickly. Um, but I like the fact that I do have to go back, fight monsters again to get stuff, different stuff from them so I can make new weapons and armor based on what I got from them. I like the fact that you can go gathering, mining, all that stuff, just so you can get uh, another piece of ore to make your sword stronger and all that. And obviously, the best part of Monster Hunter is playing with friends, because honestly, like the last few weeks has been pretty boring because I can only play online with people at certain times because they have school and work, and I understand that. But um, it's the best part is playing online with people. Randoms or friends, uh, that's really where it gets down to. And nothing is more satisfying than seeing that like a zoom in um, main quest complete. You just kill this giant ass monster, and it's like yeah, oh, don't Jesus. step everywhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 360 no scope, great sword charge in the sky. One of the best things I've ever had was the first time I killed Katku in Monster Hunter One. I was like yeah, in your face, Corey. I did it with a sword and shield. You said it couldn't be done. Let's not forget. Let's, let's not forget how you how you slayed a monster. <laughs> Something really hilarious happened last night when uh, me and Unreal played online. Okay, I, I'd rather explain this. Um, it was it was. Uh, this is for the new installment. Um, basically, we decided to hunt one monster that tends to fly in the air. It's known as Rathalos, this red dragon, or weaver, whatever you want to call it. But for Akago, we'll just call him a dragon because that's what it looks like. In some form. Okay, but it was just me, Shadow Snake, Angel, and some random. I already forget his name, but uh, 
what happened is the Rathalos got away and went to the next area. So, since I'm pretty sure, since I'm usually familiar with the game now and figure out where the monster goes, what attacks it does, um, Rathalos basically landed, so I was ready to great sword charge. Because charging up that particular weapon does more damage when you do it right. And as soon as it finishes, Rathalos decides to take off again. But my sword hit him, and it killed him in midair. <laughs> and I just That's sat there going, Baltimore Orioles number one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the fact that it zooms in on it and plays that triumphant music really puts it in. Yeah, in anytime you kill a monster, it focuses on the monster's death, and I'm like, oh shit, maybe I broke something. Also, so far, the newest game, 3 Ultimate, I'm finding is the most accessible and the easiest to get into. So, it, Akago, if you're curious, uh, if you got a Wii U, pick the game up. Even if you got a 3DS, you pick it up, but. The Wii U you can play online, so you, there's more you can do with that. So, uh, honestly, like, dude, like, if you're on the fence about it, I just say pick it up and see what you like. If you p bought the game, one of the games once, and you didn't like it, oh well, you didn't like it. But, uh, it's, I mean, like, if we, if these guys got in to try as easily as they did, I think you can get into the game pretty easily, too. I mean, it's the like I, it's, it it all happened like even with like I noticed Scott had tried. And I'm like, oh, I have somebody else to play Monster Hunter with, and then everybody else got it. <laughs> so, and we played try nonstop. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like every chance we got, we played. So now the new ones have summertime's probably going to be taken up for a lot of Monster Hunter. Just yeah, um, I should just add. Um, if you don't like grinding, like if you don't like re like repeating stuff for grinding, if you don't like that aspect, this game is probably not for you because that is a main part. It, well, half the fun of this game is going and fighting the monsters over it. Because I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying, people like don't like grinding, mm -hmm. and this game definitely has it. If they don't like it, they're they're they probably would lose interest in this game. Yeah, I'm yeah, they definitely as a possibility. And I know a lot of people go on about RPGs, oh, grinding, oh my god, but like... Drawing magic! What the fuck? Like, at least it's not drawing magic. At, and, at, le at least hunting a monster over and over again is satisfying, drawing magic is not satisfying. So, <laughs> yeah. Neither is Final Fantasy XIII, but still. But uh, Another thing I want to add, um, in terms of likability, uh, you already mentioned satisfaction. Uh, let me take an example. I don't. Want, I'm not comparing these games, but in terms of satisfaction of getting something done, like killing a monster or a boss, pretty much summed up my experience with Dark Souls. Every time I beat a boss or got through something, I was just like, "Yeah, party every week, baby." Monster Hunter was kind of like that, and I played Monster Hunter first on try. Yeah, there's 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 nothing more satisfying than uh, especially like the big dragon and boss monsters like the really big ones that you've been fighting it and you've lost over and over again and then fight like another example you guys probably hadn't fought this yet but the first time I beat fatally I was like fuck you you killed me 10 times fuck you <laughs> so mom, yeah I, I hate it okay let, let me put it in perspective fatally if you if he touches you you're dead so Hey, let's sleep bomb him in the tundra. <laughs> yeah, that'll never happen. But, um, but I mean, if like, like Unreal said, if you don't like grinding or you don't like fighting the same thing over and over again, you're not gonna enjoy the game. But I mean, don't take my word for it. Don't take our word for it. Give it a shot for yourself. It has the most content of all the games so far. Yeah, I was about to state that. that yeah, it has all the weapons, all the, or all the weapon types. It has. Um, a bunch of monsters. It has a bunch of monsters. Like, I mean, me and Unreal play Portable 3rd. All the Portable 3rd monsters so far are in this game. Um, monsters, older monsters, I think, are... Uh, older monsters came back. Plesioth came back, which I was finally glad they did because they added underwater combat and try, and I was like, where's Plesioth then? <laughs> so, like, I mean... 
Just give it a shot. If you don't like it, whatever. Yeah. But at least so you can play online with us, you ass. <laughs> hey, he probably doesn't have the Wii U. We don't know. But just see for yourself. But take into consideration the things we said. And take into consideration what some other places are saying. Just like, like with grinding, with what you actually do in the game. Like, and... Like I, like I said, um, this is one of the few games where it, there is satisfaction in completing something. Mm -hmm. So that, that's something to take into consideration. And if you do have a Wii U and you do end up getting in it, um, this month there will be cross-region play. Because I believe Akago is in the European area, so he can play with us when that update comes out. Yeah. Not to mention, you, like, one thing I guess I forgot to mention, there's like, this game has like over 500 hours of play <laughs> yeah it's there's a lot of stuff to do and all the dlc is free <laughs> and and it's usually weekly like they added new quests and stuff mm -hmm. but you have to download it but it's free won't cost you a penny which is the definitely only thing you'll cost. be paying for is the game itself if you, if you get it that's right it. which is definitely a plus like they in japan you have to pay for the dlc so you stupid. have to pay for the online service too. Yeah, they have to pay to play online too. But I mean, in Japan, it's their Call of Duty. Everybody and their grandma has a copy of it. So things are different over yeah, here. Things are different here. If you charge to play online here, it probably would not sell as well. Anyways, th so yeah, I could go basically in seventy-two point font above my head. You'll see the words "buy it." Yeah, do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that answered your question, Akago, because you're the only question, like I mentioned, so that's it. If you want to ask us questions, you can go ahead and ask us either on the YouTube comments, River City Gamer comments, uh, website comments, or on our Facebook page, because, you know, we have one of those. What about Twitter? Because I think... Scott's always mentioned Twitter. Uh, do we have a Twitter? We each have Twitter. Scott has a Twitter. At SCXCR, I have at Zero Master. Unreal, you have one, right? No, because fuck Twitter. Okay, well, <laughs> a Angel Halo, I know, has one. I know Oni has one. Yeah, but nobody follows me. I follow you. I follow <laughs> you. Don't I just count. ignore what you post. No one counts. <laughs> Because it's always wrestling stuff I don't understand. I'm like, oh. Well, excuse the hell out of me! <laughs> like, remember, remember when I asked you, right. I'm like, if you hate TNA so much, why do you watch it? <laughs> because I'm a fucking masochist, that's what! But, plus, I watch it for Mickey James. I mean, Shut up! So, yeah, if you... Uh, ask us a question. What we said. Or... Ask us a question, because... Previous uh, podcasts were good with questions, or decent. So, so... We're getting close to done, but before we do that, let's um, see what everyone's up to. Um, let's go um, in slightly reverse order. I say slightly because it's not exactly reverse order from the the game pickup. So, Zero, go first. What are you doing? Uh, okay, well, video updates. Nothing's really moving <laughs> because Monster Hunter... <laughs> But wow. um, also because I'm waiting on something from someone, I'm my Ultimate Fighter review um, is scripted. Um, I'm just waiting for parts from somebody. Like I'm not su like I can start working on the episode. I just haven't started yet because I don't have everything. But because I want to wait till I have a little more stuff, um, I need to record it too. So I'm gonna have a lot more time this weekend to get stuff done. So I'll probably work on it this weekend. Um, I started writing the next part of the Under Oath Retrospective. It's going to take me a long time because I'm literally going to cover every song on the album this time. And there's a DVD that goes with it. And there's extra tracks on top of that. Plus, I could, I, I've only written the history section so far for this review. So it's going to take me a while to write. And since I'm only covering one album this time, I'm basically making the entire review about it. So, um... The next Under Oath retrospective is on its way, um, but uh, it's going to take me a while to write and get down concrete because there's a lot to cover, even though it's just one album. Um, other than that, I do have a couple of short reviews planned, 
that'll be coming soon. There's a Wii game I want to review that uh, I don't think its online servers are open anymore, but I'm not sure. But um, it's, it's Naruto Clash of Ninja Revolution 3 um, for the Wii, and it's probably one of the best fighting games on the Wii. The, well, the earlier fighting games for the Wii. And uh, I also want to do my review of uh, Final Bout. And it's not, I promise, it won't attack Angel Hill. I promise. <laughs> I, I, I might call him out on something, but I will not attack him. Angel, you don't have to put up a shield around me. Sorry, I was lying down. What? <laughs> <laughs> he was not even paying attention uh -huh. to it. So, okay, so that's cool. So, that's basically my updates. Uh, maybe a new henshin time soon, but I'm trying to not do them because I did a whole bunch of them, so... Yeah. Alright, I'm done. Angel? Um, I was supposed to get a video out two months ago. Okay, next! <laughs> is, is that seriously it? Um, pretty much. College... Work... Fire Emblem, Monster Hunter... I, are you gonna do my request for uh, Trials and Errors reporting, or do I have to donate each version to you? I'll, I'll happily accept your donations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's it. Alright, Oni. Okay, um, I'm working on two scripts. I'm still working on Jet Set Radio. Good God, will I ever get that done? Um, I'm working on Magic Sword because this guy over here, this Canadian guy over here, wrote this month of River City Gamers is Final Fight Double Impact, and I said, I might as well get Magic Sword out of the way. You're welcome. Hey, you a middle finger. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm working on those two scripts, and it's gonna take me a little while. Uh, the season five finale of Raw Down Rebound is next week. Just got the quickie because of WrestleMania weekend, and we'll have that post show for WrestleMania weekend. Uh, by the way, if you hear me screaming in John Cena just won. I just exploded and I'm ready to kill things. Wait, he won? No, he if he wins. I hope not. I hope not either, but wait. Cena never loses. <laughs> that's, that shit does, that doesn't happen. Uh, okay, I'm going to have a wrestling related question for you afterwards, but uh, just continue. Okay, well, yeah, the season finale of RDR Season 5 is next week, along with... The WrestleMania 29 post show for the show of shows, and well, you get the idea. Um, and I still say Raw Down Rebounds better than Tokusatsu Corner. That would be false because they don't have spacemen who have drill legs. Just Super Saiyan. We have Brodus Clay. That's sad enough. That's sad but, enough. But yeah, Foes sad isn't indeed. sad. Foes is awesome. So you're comparing awesome to shit. Okay, okay, you know what? Why don't we finally pick a date? You know what I'm all, talking about. All I'm saying is that Space Drill and no, Cosmic no, States. No, 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 no. Cosmic that. States. The other date. The one you challenged us to. We already picked a date. Oh, then announce it, fucker. I'll announce it when it's, when we're closer to time. We still got a lot of Toku Corner stuff to take care of. I challenge you to review Ricky 1. Wait. <laughs> Fuck your Ricky 1! <laughs> Shove that up your ass! Show it up your old ass. <laughs> okay, but no, yeah, all seriousness. Uh, I'm hoping to get up the next episode of Arcade Room at least late April to early May. And uh, Jet Set Radio, it'll be in 2025. The way things are going. Just something I guess I should add since Oni talked. Expect a trailer sometime soon for that thing. I don't know. It has something to do with Power Rangers and wrestling. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, uh, I mean CM Punk, Jason David Frank, we all know CM Punk. I, it's, I, I don't even know who those guys are. <laughs> I, just... <laughs> I don't know either. This, this is a different continuity, I think. So. And I'm just here because Scott's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Wait, you don't have video updates on real? Oh, I do. I was just seeing if Oni was done. No, I'm done. I mean... Okay, that's it. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> um... Video updates. I want to start with The Last Hunt. 
uh, there hasn't been anything for the last hunt because, again, SCR was pretty much gone the whole week to focus on the ANG Ohio stuff. And he's actually one part of, like, the last hunt along with a couple of others. Which means, like, I'll be able to, like, work on the videos, but they won't be fully done until they're commented, commentated over and stuff. They won't take long. I just gotta get myself to working on them. Two videos are actually prepared for commentary, but again, um, Scott's un unavailability have made me have to like push it back a little. But I'm planning to hopefully get those all done within April, because at least when I looked on the Miiverse for Ultimate, apparently, I'm not sure if this is true, but it seems like the Tri servers are closing April 30th. So if I could get all those videos out before the official server closing, that would be good. But, um, aside from that, um, really haven't been able to work on anything. Like, I really want to. There, there's a couple of things I did want to work on that shouldn't be hard to work on, but I just haven't had time or just been way too lazy to do it. Well, I just gotta, like, I just gotta focus and rearrange everything and just set myself up for that, really. And they're all review-based. Um, with Menu Madness, I actually have two videos recorded. They just gotta get edited. I can probably maybe get a video out soon, at least one of them, and the other one will come out later, because I don't want two close together to be released. It, it sucks that that, that, I, that thing I suggested isn't available in America, because that would have been a good one for a negative review, because it was awful. Yeah, but I noticed that Dunkin' Donuts had something new, and it was like a breakfast thing. Oh. It, it was like a breakfast sandwich, but... The bread is like a glazed donut. That sounds like a bad version of the McRiddle. <laughs> well, I may do Dunkin' Donuts at some point. Let's just hope that thing sticks around, because who knows, maybe it'll be really terrible. Heart attack, never know. Heart attack in your hands! Nah, I still think the heart attack girl gets that in speed. <laughs> that ain't fast food, and they're crap anyway, who cares? Um. And, in terms of videos, that's it, but I'm gonna add something in conjunction to something I'm working on. Um, I guess I'll do a little announcement here. Even though it's already a month earlier, um, coming up around the end of May is Anime North, up in Toronto, Canada. If I'm correct. I mean, I am correct, right? Cause I've no, gone... you're not. You're completely off. Okay, so it's in California, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in Toronto, right? Yeah, it's in Toronto. So yeah, uh, we're going to be at Anime North. Well, some of us from River City Gamers. Um, myself, Zero, SCR, Blondie, and Wiz. We'll all be up there for Anime North this year, and the dates are... When are the dates? 24th to 26th? I don't know. I'm not at my computer. I can't look it up. Uh, hang on. Give me a moment. Yeah, from the 24th to the 26th, we'll be at Anime North up in May. If anyone goes up there, if they live in the States or actually watches us up in Canada, uh, just look for us around there. We'll be around. Like, if you run into us and feel like chatting, why not? I'm... Unless we're really busy. I'm kind of jealous that I'm unable to go with my current situation. Mainly because of the arcade you guys have up there. Yeah. Well, in Toronto. Um, and there's one other thing I want to add to Anime North. We will... And I hope this is confirmed with you, Zero. It's not 100% confirmed yet, but I mean, we're, we're working on it. Okay. Um, like you said, not 100% confirmed, apparently. But... If it does work out, we will be having a panel. But maybe at a later podcast when things are much more finalized and confirmed, we'll get more info on that. Just it, as of right now, we will have a possible panel. 
Yeah, and our current idea for the panel is basically making it a live version of like the podcast, but uh, obviously with more Q and A and audience interaction. So uh, it'll probably end up getting recorded too. So. Mhm. And Sadly, I won't be there. Yeah, like that's why I said some members because not it, not everyone's gonna. Be it's there. also gonna include members that normally aren't on the site. Um, with their own shows, like I mean, um, Roger. Uh, A.K.A. the Sage from uh, uh, Arcade Aficionados is going to be there, um, and I think we're having a couple other people who aren't norm like who aren't like main people on the site, but they're kind of like sidekicks or side characters. <laughs> it sounds so bad for me to say, but they'll they'll side be kicks. attending the convention as well. Yeah. So, yeah, Anime North, uh, meet us up there. But. Speaking with Anime North, um, the last thing I'm going to work on is the Power Rangers related thing. I'm starting my thing up at Anime North, and it will continue to Kineticon, which is in July, but we'll go into that some other time when July comes around, obviously, but it's just, I really hope with the Power Rangers thing, at least to myself, I hope I can get what I wanted. Like, I hope it all goes well. I hope that I can actually push myself to do this kind of project. Well, we'll do our best to help you out. Yeah. Like, I really appreciate it, too. And, why? like, I want to do it because, A, like I've probably mentioned before, I want to see if I'm really good at doing stuff like this, kind of as a self-test, and B... I want to honor the 20th anniversary of Power Rangers somehow, but that's all I'm going into detail about, because why spoil the whole thing? Uh, Alright. That's all I've got, and that's all we've got for this podcast, I guess. So. Uh, Unreal, before we go, I hate to do this, I really do. I just found out something. What, Project Cross Zone? We know. Yes! Oh, you just... I just I mean, found out, and I'm excited. Yeah, I want it. We've we've known it was getting an American release, but now an exact date came out. Which, yeah. by the way, it's in May. No, it's I mean, June. sorry, not May. Sorry, June 25th. Well, good thing I'm not going. That, to that's a why I didn't like. I didn't read into the June things for. Uh, I apologize. Upcoming for releases. So. I apologize for that. I'm just so excited now. I want this game. Watch it have 20 years of dialogue and two minutes of gameplay, just like fucking Namco Cross Capcom. <laughs> I've always wanted to play Namco Cross Capcom. You don't know how bad. I think the, I think the, fan translation team gave up on it. That's how bad the dialogue was. It just wouldn't end. It's like but there was too much Japanese. So, that's it for updates, and that's actually it for the River City Gamers podcast. I think this went on for quite a while, so let's just close it up. Um, I'm SCXCR. Whoops! <laughs> Let that slip out. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I'm Unreal. I'm Zero Master. I'm Oni Rakaku. And I am a. Uh, uh, I'm an Angel Halo, I guess. <laughs> and I am an enemy!